So I want to tell you a quick story. Um, I don't remember exactly when this happened to me. Uh, it was probably 20 years ago or more. I don't remember the exact date. <clears throat> but um, at that time in my life, I was in a really tough spot. <laughs> And I was in a really bad situation and internally, externally, I just was not in a good place. And um, again, I can't remember the exact date and time. I do remember where I was though. I was at my old house on Ford Road. And, um, and I know, now I know, then I didn't realize, but now I realize I was at a real crossroads <laughs> um, in my life and in some things that were going on with me. And again, I, I, sorry, I can't give you details, but the details really aren't important. I just wanted this something I want to tell you. Um, if you've never, um, if you've never experienced God or if you've never had God speak to you, this may seem strange to you because if you've never had it happen, then it's hard to appreciate unless you've experienced it. But um, in that moment in my house, I had what's called a word of knowledge. Um, and just in the, like just inside my heart and my mind, I just saw myself in this really dark tunnel. And it was very dark except for this one little place where there was light shining through. And as I was walking through the dark tunnel, obviously, the light kind of caught my attention. And um, inside my heart, this is what I heard. If you ignore me in this, you're going to end up in prison. And I was like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Now, to this day, I don't know if that was literally prison or like a, a spiritual prison or an emotional prison because I wasn't at the time, I wasn't like breaking the law or I wasn't, do, I wasn't doing anything in the natural that would end me up in prison. So I don't know whether that was natural or spiritual, but I'll tell you what, it totally got my attention. <laughs> like totally got my attention. And... And I, I mean, I just remember, I remember it changing my internal attitude and it brought me to a place of like, okay, God, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to say to me? Um, and the reason I say that is kind of as a prep for where we're going tomorrow with chapter five. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, cause we're going to a difficult place, okay? And we're gonna deal with some stuff that's not gonna be pleasant or easy to deal with. Um, if you haven't listened to chapter five, I encourage you to do it, maybe even do it again. But I mentioned this and I just wanna throw this in here. In, in 1 Kings chapter 11, there's a story about where Elijah the prophet was, <clears throat> was in a really bad place and God was trying to get his attention. And it's a really, it's a really dramatic and powerful story. And, I mean, Elijah was basically running and hiding is what he was doing. Um, and he's in this cave and God calls him out. And in the story, there was this earthquake and this, you know, basically like a hurricane. And it says multiple times with the hurricane and with the earthquake that God wasn't in it. But at the end of it, or at, at the end of that scene, it makes this little statement and it says that God's voice was like a gentle whisper. His voice was like a gentle whisper. And I have definitely found in my walk with God that that is true. God's voice is like a gentle whisper. And it's actually easy to not hear 
especially if you're not listening. You know, I mean, God can speak in any way that he wants to speak. But in my experience, it is, has been in that gentle whisper. So, again, just wanted to throw this in here kind of as a, a prep for tomorrow. Um, I hope you had a chance to get out and enjoy this beautiful day. It looks like the sun's going down here, but I just had a really nice walk. And So uh, we'll see you tomorrow. If you ha haven't had a chance to go through Chapter 5, I encourage you to do that. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.